back everybody to Spark Gaming Essentials. The show where we let you know the hottest new games that are releasing this month. I'm Julian. And I'm Janessa. Let's get it started. Is Rage a blessing or a curse? That's the question presented by action RPG Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood. The game is based on a tabletop RPG that's part of the larger World of Darkness series, where hidden supernatural forces vie for power. In the lore, werewolves act as protectors of nature, keeping the destructive entity called the Worm in check. This game puts you into the fur of Kahal, a werewolf who was banished from his tribe after a violent outburst left another tribe member dead. Now the Lone Wolf is taking on an oil corporation that may seem like just another company profiting off environmental destruction, but in truth, they deliberately serve the worm. To combat them, Kahal can take on three forms. As a human, he can interact with other humans and the environment. As a wolf, he can quickly explore and stealthily sneak past enemies. And as a werewolf, he can unleash his rage and deal with problems using brute force. The game's developer, Cyanide, wants to tell a morally ambiguous story that makes players ask themselves if their rage is really solving the problem or just further playing into the worm's destructive plans. Cyanide is also the developer behind the Styx stealth video games, so expect to see familiar sneaking elements if you're a fan of that franchise. Combat had to be built from scratch, and it's reminiscent of games like Prototype and Infamous Second Son, where you play as an overpowered protagonist using supernatural abilities to take on scores of militarized enemies. Though expect the action to unfold over linear levels rather than an open world. Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood is out for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PS4 and Xbox One on February 4th. Defy death and unleash your darkness, but make it remastered in the Neo Collection. The critically acclaimed series developed by Team Ninja makes its way to the PS5 for the first time. This ultimate collection includes the complete Neo storylines from Neo 1, Neo 2, and all six DLCs, such as Dragon of the North, Defiant Honor, Bloodshed's End, The Tengu's Disciple, Darkness in the Capital, and The First Samurai, all remastered specifically for the PS5. Neo is an action RPG that was originally released in 2017 and takes place in a darker fictional version of Sengoku era Japan, where you'll master becoming a samurai to battle demons and yokai. Yokai are supernatural spirits in Japanese folklore, which you'll become very familiar with in Neo 2, since you'll play as a half human, half yokai being and harness your supernatural powers. The Neo series is sometimes described as a Souls-like, which can be a controversial comparison, but I think what people mean is that it's difficult, there's stamina bars, and you're going to die a lot. So it's good to know that in this remaster, the load times have been greatly improved, so you'll be able to go from death to trying again in about 3 seconds. You'll also be able to play in 120 frames per second and utilize the PS5 DualSense controller with adaptive triggers for the bow and rifle and haptic feedback. Now if you're lucky enough to have a PS5 and haven't dealt into the Neo games, now is the perfect time to experience at least 200 hours worth of gruesome gameplay. I think this would be a good pickup for gamers who enjoyed Sekiro, Ghost of Tsushima, or Ninja Gaiden, which was also developed by Team Ninja. The Neo Collection is rated M for Mature and releases exclusively on the PS5 on February 5th. Are you a football fan looking for a video game other than the one that starts with M and rhymes with Jabladen? Doug Flutie Maximum Football 2020 could be the game for you. This indie game developed by Canuck Play Inc. boasts deep customization and physics-based gameplay to set itself apart. Franchise and season modes are really where this game shines. Players can make their own uniforms and helmet logos and structure entire leagues of up to 130 teams however they like with custom rule sets. You can also draw up offensive and defensive plays and test and tweak them in real time with the play designer. You can even map your buttons however you like to make pulling off said plays more natural to you. The improved College Dynasty Mode 2.0 is made to scratch the itch of college football fans who've been without an NCAA football game since 2013. 
Dynasty Mode includes player awards, conference championships, player transfers, new bowl games, and a system for recruiting up-and-coming bright young stars. And this being a game made by Canadians, Canadian football with its unique rule set like 3 downs, 12 men, and a 110-yard field is also represented. If you're a fan of football, be it college or either North American Professional League, and you want to support a passionate indie dev that's been steadily improving on their vision year after year, check out Doug Flutie Maximum Football 2020 when physical copies for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One hit the shelves on February 9th. I wouldn't consider our next game a scary game considering I played the first one and I didn't die, but it definitely toes the line in the suspenseful spooky area. I'm talking about Little Nightmares 2. There's a lot of ways to describe this game. On one hand, it's a side-scroller. You'll explore the world as Mono, that's the one with the bag on his head, and Six, the one in the yellow raincoat, by quite simply walking around. But it's also a puzzle platformer where you'll have to problem solve to see what you can use in your environment like shadows to hide from the disturbing residents or open doors to escape. Make a mistake and the game is very unforgiving in your demise. Little Nightmares 2 will expand the creepy imagery of its predecessor that will have you explore woodlands and sinister schools to find where the evil is coming from that spreads via the TV. I gave this a try because I love indie games, so if you'd like to support a smaller dev, you can't go wrong here. I'd also recommend it to fans of games like Limbo and Inside, which are puzzle games with disturbing themes. Of course, if you enjoyed the original Little Nightmares, which released in 2017, you'll want to check this out. Little Nightmares 2 releases for PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One on February 11th and is rated T for Teen. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Spark Gaming Essentials. If you want to know more about the games we just talked about, talk to a guest advisor at your local store, go to GameStop.com, or check out your console's marketplace. And if you want to see past episodes or just can't get enough of Janessa or myself, head to GameStop's YouTube channel and check out the Spark playlist. You can also follow me on Twitter at HugItOut. I'm on Twitter too. You can find me at Pods of War. Thanks for watching.